Okay, so you've got your fish generating lots of thrust through one or more of these uh, sets of fins. But they want to do it in an efficient way by not wasting a lot of energy in inefficient thrust, in thrusting an inefficient shape through the water. And that's because it would cause too much drag. So here are three types of drag that a fish in water will encounter and the way in which they are sometimes modifying their behavior morphology so as to minimize that drag. The first is viscous drag, and that is basically the same thing I said earlier as frictional drag, which is rubbing on the outside of the surface of the fish as it moves through the water. Uh, and so in this case, uh, they have combat, through an evolutionary perspective, uh, viscous drag by increasing either the surface smoothness, by getting rid of scales altogether, or if you retain the scales, making sure that their axis is aligned with the water, as you see in the scales on the upper right. Those are called placoid scales, which we'll get to a little bit later. So that just makes it a little bit smoother and easier moving through the water. It's not a rough surface trying to move through the water. Another form of drag that fish encounter is turbulent drag. And so that is, as you're moving a surface through the water, it generates a lot of vortices, which aren't pushing the water back when you want to move forward. Instead, they're just mixing the water around. So that's inefficient because you're using a lot of energy and force to just move the water around uh, through in turbulence, not in uh, direct propulsion. Now, one way to reduce that turbulent drag is by increasing the what's called the aspect ratio, which is the depth to length ratio of the uh, caudal fin or the propulsive fin. It's most common here in the caudal fin. And so the fish on the top right, the salmon-y type fish, does not have a very high aspect ratio, but the tuna in the bottom does. A high fin that isn't very deep, they generate relatively little turbulence off of the back of it, so it's a very efficient shape whereas the salmon uh, generate a lot of turbulence because they have like a big paddle they're moving through the water. You might wonder why any fish would have this uh, low aspect ratio tail, which is inefficient, and that's because it has a much larger surface area for actually generating thrust. So if you want to go quickly, then a low aspect ratio flat big tail like that can do it. It's just not very efficient. A third form of drag is inertial drag, and this is basically just the idea that fish moving through the water essentially have to push the water out of the way. Water is largely non-compressible. Air is compressible, right? You can pump it into a scuba tank and it'll, it'll just jam much more air in there because you can compress it, compressed air. You can't do that with water, not much anyway. So as a result, when a fish is moving through the water, it really just has to push the water out of the way. And that's called inertial drag. Now, it's uh, shown hydrodynamically that the best way to um, minimize this inertial drag is to have a streamlined shape, which is optimal where the depth or the width of the fish or other object in the water to the length ratio is about one quarter, and the highest part of that is placed about one third of the back from the leading edge. And so you see this shape in fish, like the swordfish here, or the tuna or the Greenland shark, but you also see it in mammals that live in the water, that's the blue whale or the dolphin. And in fact, you can see that they look kind of like a submarine shape as well. Submarines also uh, try to minimize inertial drag by generating this streamlined body shape. Now you're generating thrust, but you also need to generate lift. As I mentioned earlier, gravity does work in water as well as on land and everything in the water unless it has some way to float or to generate thrust and lift upward it just sinks to the bottom so many fish want to maintain neutral buoyancy that is they want to stay in the depth of water column at the depth they want to be at without wasting much energy so in order to maintain that position they need to counteract the force of gravity with some force generating lift and one of those ways is through an internal float. Here are three types of internal floats here. Uh, sharks tend to have uh, oily livers, which oil is lighter than water, so that will help generate lift. And then there are two types of swim bladders or air bladders in fish. One is called physostomus and the other one is physoclistus. Now, both of these are like the buoyancy control device in scuba gear. 
where you let air into it if you go down, so it expands and keeps you at that level. But as you go up, the air in it is expanding and you have to let, you have to let some out if you're to maintain the same volume of air and therefore neutral buoyancy uh, at a given depth. So the, if you're going up, you have to get air out of your swim bladder. And if you're going down, you have to put air into your swim bladder, both of which will maintain neutral buoyancy. The physostomus swim bladder does that because there's a connection to the stomach. And so basically fish can go up to the surface, gulp some air, and then force it into their swim bladder or they can burp it out when they want to get rid of it. The physoclistus swim bladder does not have a direct connection to the gut, but rather there's a chemical reaction that occurs in this thing called the gas gland that will cause gas to move out of the blood and into the swim bladder. And then it's lost through the oval back into the, um, into the blood. Each of these forms has different benefits and advantage. For instance, a physoclistus swim bladder is a lot easier for fish to regulate their buoyancy uh, if they never are anywhere near the surface because they don't have to go gulp air. But at the same time, it's much slower. So a fish that, that's near the surface that wants to go down deep and maintain neutral buoyancy can just swim up quickly, take a gulp of air, force it in, and then go down deep. Whereas it takes longer if you have a physoclistus swim bladder. And when you bring fish up from the deep in trawls, often this, they can't uh, change the swim, bla swim bladder volume quick enough and basically it expands so much that it'll start forcing their, their stomach out, out of their mouth. And sometimes people will like um, poke a needle in the swim bladder and push it back in, although I don't know what effect that has on survival. In addition to having a float, you can generate lift even without a float. Like an airplane, you can manipulate uh, your flaps essentially to generate more or less lift. And so here are examples of a shark on the left and a sturgeon in the middle on the right uh, where it's manipulating its pectoral fin downward if it wants to rise, generate lift upward. If it wants to hold position, it keeps it relatively straight. But if it wants to sink or go down, then it will tip its uh, fin like this, which as it goes through the water will force it downward. If you, it's like holding your arm out the window, right? And you know when you're in a fast car and you go like this and you're your hand will move up or down depending on whether you tilt it up or if you tilt it down. It's the same, same phenomenon.